All right, folks, welcome to another edition of Ascension Outdoors. I'm Lyle Johnson. And I'm Goosey Geis. From South Louisiana, I guess I should explain. Looks like the kind of home for my kind of man. Fishing them by you streams and dreaming from dream to dream. Flipping on what mama nature store. Yeah, you won't believe the things I saw on old Lake Marapon. Mama nature, you're gonna drive us all insane. Rustle of their wings in that cold December wind brings me back to the banks of Marapal. Ascension Outdoors is brought to you by the following sponsors. man summertime's here bro it's here hot and heavy and uh one of the hot and heavy controversies for 20 years going on has uh come to another crossroads really <laughs> wildlife and fisheries is uh as of june the 20th has uh removed the 14 inch minimum size limit in the chafalaya basin yeah and as of this date uh it happened at a time when the water's still up and also right. there's a whole, not a whole lot of fish being caught anyway right. in most counts from everybody i've been talking to yeah I, I didn't get a chance to go yet in there and try it out but right. like i say uh, i do know some people that's been fishing in their tournaments and stuff and a couple of real good fishermen i know uh, last week had a tournament there and they had to go down below highway 90 to catch fish right it was, it's been the same all the way from henderson down the yeah. reports i've gotten is uh fish has really been bad so as far as uh, anybody's concerns about the gold rush thing, you know, mining them out right quick is uh, yeah. really kind of did okay. And maybe the furor will calm down a little bit and, you know, not everybody's right. going to be hitting the launch if they go two or three weeks and don't catch nothing. So, which wouldn't bother me if they were catching them because, you know, I've uh, heard a few arguments about um, one of them was, uh, man, the, they gonna, that's the end of the right. fishing in the Chafalaya Basin, you know, and... Uh, I personally just believe that's folks that's got a, a little bit too young to remember what the basin was like, yeah. uh, you know, and catching a bunch of fish. Yeah, it's not the same place it was right. 25, 30 years ago. But you're no not going to ever catch them all out. No, no, no yeah. way. I mean, I, I mean, we got other bodies of water. They're not caught out right. in there, you exactly. know. So why would Chafalaya Basin be any different? You know, that's a big, vast expanse of right. swampland right there. 30% that's of the big place. The river's flood waters come in yeah. the spring, too. So that's 30% of the fish that comes out in Mississippi gets put in the basin again as yeah. well. So, you know. It'll and, all work out. Uh, another argument I heard was, well, they done caught all the fish out in Cottawatcha because they didn't put a 12-inch limit on them after the classic when Kevin Van Dam caught all them mm -hmm. fish. And uh, Cottawatcha, you can see all four sides of it. Chafalaya sure. Basin is 1.2 million acres, so it's you know, a little different. Fish, fishing, it, like any fish in game, goes in cycles. You know, right. I remember back y'all in Lake Verrett, it was not a problem to go over there and catch an ice chest of brim in the lake. Right. You could go anywhere and then catch. That was a given right there for years. I thought that'd never end. And you know, uh, nowadays people go there catfishing with worms and I'll catch a lot of catfish. Very few catch any brim right. to amount to anything fishing just out the edges of Lake Barrett. Right. I know they did not catch the fish out of there right. and, and the bluegill out of there and what happened to them I don't know but for whatever reason they're not in Lake Barrett like they They'll used be to be. I, I don't understand it and I don't know if anybody can really tell you the answer right. to that. They'll be back but uh, you know this the end of July is also a uh, uh, time for the East Central Sportsman League Terry Malonsaw Memorial Challenge, Saltwater mm -hmm. Challenge, and uh, that's coming up the 19th and the 20th uh, down in Grand Isle. Yeah, East Central Sportsman League puts that on. Look, and, and you ain't got to, uh, you know, uh, make a loan to get in this tournament right. right here. 
And of course, you ain't gonna walk away with enough money to retire out of it. But there's some money to be won in. Right. But more than anything, that event right there is a bunch of, you know, semi-local people that get together yeah, and go to Grand Isle and have a good time. Right. You know, there's two suppers for about it there. Right. One on Friday night, one on Saturday night. There's a, a flounder division, a redfish division, and a, a speckled trout division. That's right. In the rodeo, and there's a trash fish division right. in it. Anything that's not one of the other three that I just mentioned. But uh, it's it's that's a great event right there. It's it's good time for everybody to get together and just that's have right. a, a blast now. You can fish in a motorboat. Yeah. You can fish in a kayak, or you can fish on foot. And it, it's a team. I believe you can have up team to five in right. the team. Now you got to stay sight up. All five that's in your team. You right. can't send two to Timberley Island and two to Beerus, and then two fishing off the beach. And, and what's interesting with that rodeo right there also. You don't really need a boat to win it. That's right. I have won that a division, the flounder division off of it, fishing off the side, side of the road. road. The first time we had it, there was a group of people called the Salvos in that group. They call them bucket fishermen. They won the speckled trout division of that rodeo that time. They had a bunch in that rodeo off the beach. Right. They hey, fished from the surf. It's a great event. Ten bucks is about what it costs you to enter for each member and uh be a member of the Sportsman League, which only costs five bucks. So you can get all the information on easlonline.org or call Wesley Johnson at 225-324-3035. Uh, and uh, hey, we're getting ready to go do some early season shooting. Huh? Oh yeah, I'm trying to get in tune there. But that was a Sportsman League event right. too, the Sport and Clay Scramble. And it was a fundraiser for the Sportsman League. And, uh, it's always good to do a little shooting. It, it kind of humbles you. Hone your skills a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it, it humbles you a little bit when you go, you know. Yeah. All right, folks, stay tuned, and we'll be right back with a lot of bang banging. If you're looking for a pontoon boat, head down Airline Highway to Premier Performance Marine in Gonzales. Pontoon boats have come a long way, and whether it's a South Bay, Excursion, Berkshire, or Bentley Encore, let the friendly folks at Premier Performance Marine find the pontoon boat that's right for you. Whether you want a traditional cruiser, a stern lounge, or a fishing model, we have the largest selection of pontoon boats in the South. Come see Wendell or Phillip at Premier Performance Marine and visit MyPontoons.com for the latest deals and specials. Ascension equipment right here on Airline Highway. A lot of machinery here that a lot of us don't really like to operate a lot of times. It involves cutting grass. I know myself, I'm not a big grass cutter, but we got to do it. We got anything from the conventional riders to the right. zero turns. Ain't no better place to get you one than right here. Roland J. Robert Distributor in Burnside has been keeping South Louisiana fueled up since 1924. We provide wholesale fuel and petroleum products to industries and service stations. We also specialize in the development of retail convenience stores. Our people have the expertise and support to help you start a thriving business. If you're looking to build your own Chevron, Shell, or unbranded service station, call Keith, Jim, or Harold. Get fueled up with Roland J. Robert Distributor. Clay Scramble. Uh, I guess it's the fifth, sixth, seventh one that we've had. Uh, good day to tune up your shooting and, and really get in track with how good of a shot you are. Now, some of these guys that's here today are really good. I like to do it. Uh, it's a uh, means of raising money for these Central Sports League. It's a great organization that we have in our communities. And thank, thanks so much for them. It's going to be a, a blast. Uh, uh, the, day, the day is nice. Uh, there's a cold front come through, a cool front, whatever you want to call it in June. 
but if it was in the winter time, it'd be cold right now. But a nice front come through. The humidity is not as high as it has been. A perfect morning for, for this type of event. Looking forward to it and uh, ready to get started. How you doing, Mary? I'm doing fine. That's good. We're gonna have a good day. We're gonna have a real good day. It's a lot of fun, like you said. You say you don't do it very much, and I don't very either. Much. And uh, but these two guys do, so they're gonna instruct us on where we need to be at on target, and uh, and, and that's very helpful. That's very very helpful yes, to you to have somebody telling you where to put it at a lot of times on somebody on those targets. That'd be great. Yeah, it is. It, it helps me a whole lot. <laughs> We're all right, let's get started. Fun. Okay. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to learn how to shoot good, you gotta shoot plenty. That's how you, you learn. Shoot what? Plenty. Well. People, I'd say most people. Am I right in saying shoot open and under? Before the plate, right? Maybe you're shooting automatic, and you are. No, you shoot no, open and under too. And and Mary, you shoot automatic and. You shoot over and under sometimes. Right? I shoot over and under, but the recoil kind of gets to you oh, at yeah. the end of the shoot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the automatic doesn't beat you up. Right. Yeah. I would probably be more comfortable really shooting my hunting gun. Oh, yeah. The only time I shoot this one when we come to these events like this. Well, this is a hunting gun. So you shooting your hunting gun? Oh, yeah. That's great. All this right, let's is move. a hunting gun, too. You always a hunting gun, too? <laughs> yep. Well, let's go hunt down some more. Some more tar targets here. Boom! There you got him. And that there, you got to get on as soon as you can, I guess. Yeah. Depends. Speed out from under the second one.
job. Oh, Good God. job. <laughs> yeah, this left is doing, man. Good job. Good job. So what about them teal? Don't seem like they were that small when they were really hunting them. Sometimes they look smaller than that to me. Yeah, you're right. All right, let's see what you got, man. Whoa. Uh huh. Good shot. Yeah, you're right. That's right. He got it all right. Got it. Yeah. Dusted a few feathers. I seen. So how you shooting been today, bro? I've been struggling. I did better last year. Oh, come on. Really that good at doing it. That's understandable. I know where I stand, but. But I guess all in all, I'm doing average. Last year, I did my best, you know. I want to do better this year, you know, that goes. That, that ain't been the case. All right, bro, let's, see what, let's see what you got, man. Let's see what you got. Hey, there you go. Every now and then. Tired bro, Jambalaya. Look, Gonzalez, Jambalaya capital of the world. It don't get no better than that. Y'all all the best, no doubt. All right, man, we're here with the uh, Bayou Band of Shooting Team from Homer, Louisiana. I was shooting video today, and I was quite impressed by these young guys and the way they shot it, so I'm letting them introduce themselves. Connor Shessel, Jordan from Santa. He had a plan. All right, you know, uh, Central Parish also has a 4 inch shooting team. They get to go to some national competitions. They shoot uh, rifles and uh, bows and everything. I don't know, do y'all get in that type of competition? That's most of the shot. We get in the 22 muscle yeah, loader archery. Right. Pretty, so y'all pretty good. Who shot the best today? Ian. Ian. How many did you get? 89 out of 100. That's pretty good. How did you shot? 77. 73. 83. Man, bro, they got me wild bad. I'm glad I didn't shoot that. I'm just, I'm just feeling bad. Look, man, these guys did a great job. They got the coach standing right over there, although he don't take much credit. He said he's been bringing them around. I tell you what, they not only shot here today at the sports league in Clay Spring, but they get ready to leave and drive two and a half hours to go to another shoot. So uh, not only are they good, but they get ready to get to the shoot. So how old are you? 14, 15, 16, 17. So y'all will be doing this for another couple of years? Yeah, 80 yeah. For this? No. For uh, the muzzle loader and 22 and 17 or 18, I think. All right, man. Well, look, congratulations, fellas. Y'all done a real good job today. I'm glad I didn't have to shoot against y'all. And, uh, and they did a great job.
Hi, welcome to this. Right this way. Whether it's keeping you warm through the winter, helping you get dinner on the table, or making sure your fresh catch is frying just right, Feral Gas makes your house a home. Our dependable nationwide network ensures you have propane when you need it. When choosing a propane supplier, you want the right partner. Feral Gas employees live right here in Louisiana, so they understand the needs that you have as a home propane user. Join the Feral Gas family today. The Louisiana Wildlife Federation has been protecting fish and wildlife habitat for over 70 years, increasing access for outdoorsmen and working with the legislature for fair hunting and fishing policies. But we need your help. Join LWF as a member today and let lawmakers hear your voice. Your membership dollars go toward protecting and restoring Louisiana's natural resources. It's easy. Go to LAWildlifeFed.org and make your tax-deductible donation today. All right, folks, welcome back, man. I'll tell you what, that was an enjoyable event. And mm -hmm. that uh, young group of hunters from Homer was yeah. really impressed. You know, the one thing I'd like to see more of that event right there is more people like me that go there, right. I, just hunters in general. A, a right. lot of the people that go there are shooters. Right. They are shooters, and, they, and right. they're very good at right. it. Yeah. They're real good at it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and they're very good to have with you because they can tell you different things that you're doing wrong. Right. And uh, when you start shooting 80, 85, 90, right. and, and, and 90 and above, you're doing real well right, right. there. Because that, that wasn't uh, easy shooting by no, no means. Right. You know, those angles, all the angles, and sometimes they're rising, sometimes they're falling, different, every angle you can imagine. Right. And uh, it, it's complicated. It helps out, though. All right, well, look, this first group I got right here, they might be scouting for the sportsman, uh, the saltwater challenge right here. Oh, it's yeah. the whole family, Gerald, Dad, Adam, Doug, Ted, and Keith Soche. He's behind the camera at a photo here of 113 specks. They caught at Elmer's Island in the surf. Uh, the hot bait of the day was a voodoo shrimp, and uh, looks like they got them pinpointed, bro. Speaking of Elmer's Island, do you know if that's actually open? Uh, they did open portions of it. They did, just portions of it? Yeah. All right, well, that's great. That's a good place to, to spend that yeah, right. ESL rodeo. Oh, yeah. Be yeah. Fish oh, yeah. There, I promise. Here's a nice looking group of women with a nice looking mess of fish there, also. Here's Ashley Freeman, Ashton Lanier, and Catherine Elkins with some uh, very nice red snapper. They caught 20 miles south of Fushan, June the 2nd. Beautiful picture there. Beautiful yeah, girls, yeah. beautiful mess of fish. Some fishing. Oh, I love right it. There. women that fish, man. All right, That's here's beautiful. another uh, hunt season picture here. Tommy and Red Gill with a pair of goblins, father and son team, bagged them in Barton, Missouri. They uh, killed their share of goblins this year, them too. Oh, yeah. They're they, like, they going. Yeah, they're some hunters, bro. Some of them big Missouri turkeys. That's right. They are big. Yeah, they're big. Mighty yeah, big. big. You remember that big turkey man you seen with oh, in Mississippi yeah. that time? <laughs> I I that might be an ostrich or something. I, I wish he'd came my way and, and we'd have got him. But it that was, was a giant turkey. That was big. Here's a nice deer killed by Jared Babin. No. Nine-point buck killed on December 27th of St. Francisville. Weighed 190 pounds. And, uh, Jared it, it, it always had pretty good success deer through the years. Yeah. And uh, we get uh, too many pictures in from him. Yeah, we appreciate right. your sentiment, man. Congratulations right. on that deer. All right, Jesse Argrave, here's another deer, a nice eight-point buck in Mississippi in October of last year, early season, bow kill. Uh, beautiful deer, nice rack. Mm -hmm. Love it, man. Talking about cooking and eating deer today at work, bro. <laughs> Ain't nothing like it. Yeah, I do enjoy eating them. That's right. <laughs> I guess really that's one of the main reasons I hunt whitetails. So. That's right. That is exciting sport. You know, like that, that's a nice buck right there. That buck comes, you know, probably 25, 30 yards from Close. him. At, at, Probably right. at the furthest that far. Right. Get up that close to you. You know, your heart's bumping pretty good when that happens. Can't imagine. Oh, yeah. 
And I imagine Chris Swears was pumping pretty good right here. Yeah, he killed right. this uh, nice buck hunting, Panama Hunt Club, and they running dogs. Right. And that is something that's very exciting also. Right. Hunting deer with dogs, to me, is a, uh, I mean, when, when you hear them come in your direction and you know uh -huh. sooner or later you're getting ready to see or hear the deer is coming, they ain't running your way for nothing. That's you right. Know? And uh, that is very exciting. Yeah, it is. There ain't a whole bunch of that left around here. Yeah, you're right. Sad Here's uh, another excited young lady right here, Hayden Loop, with her first brim she ever caught in a pond behind her house, man. I just, it never fails the smiles and the looks on them kids' face, man, when they're catching them fish when they're young like that. Yeah. This is her first one, so congratulations, Hayden. Good job. And yeah, traveling around in ponds and stuff, I mean. Oh, yeah. That's, I still miss that pond fishing. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it is. Doubt. All right, right here, we've got four nice redfish right here. Angel and Thomas Richard with some of the redfish they caught on, on the media trip or the Golden Meadow uh, Fushan Tarpon Rodeo press trip. Yep. Uh, and you, I believe you was on that event with them. Yeah, we uh, were fishing with uh, Captain James Ledette, uh, mm -hmm. Blue H2O Charters, first-rate captain. And we probably ain't got time to tell the whole story, but he survived the King Macro attack. 40 miles offshore, bro. The boat was going 55 in a king sky oh, yeah. and hit him right on the side of the face. Yeah. The king mackerel fell dead as a ham and he come to two days later in the hospital. That's incredible. You know, the years that, all those years, and we used to salt water fish a lot. I used to deep sea fish quite a bit. And I would see king sky. I, I've yeah. seen them, I don't know, a hundred times, you know, maybe yeah. just when I'm fishing or maybe when you're traveling, when they come completely out the water like that on their own, chasing bait, right. trying to get something down. Right. Uh, Often was fearful of that myself. I guess it just got That's to be your real, unlucky day, you know. Still worse than out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico yeah. for a fish to hit you. Worst I mean. chances. Yeah. Huh. All right, folks. We appreciate y'all tuning in. Remember, you can send your pictures in to uh, Ascension Outdoors at etail.net. But the best way to do it is get on Facebook if you got an account and like us and give me a send a picture in with a name, when, where, what you caught them on, and uh, we'd be glad to put you on TV. We will put you on the next Ascension Outdoors. From South Louisiana, I guess I should explain. It looks like the kind of home for my kind of man.